Welcome to the first ever episode of the Baseball Equipment Reviews. Today, it's all about bats. Hello everybody, my name's Adam, and today with me is Matthew. Hey. And we will be talking all about which baseball bat to get. The Easton Mako and the DeMarini Voodoo Overlord. Here are the two bats we will be comparing today. I have lizard skin grip on both of these. They are both 31 inches. The Mako is a 3120 and the DeMarini 3118. Okay, so we're gonna now focus on the Mako. I just got this bat yesterday. It's brand new, it's very cool, and I can't wait to use it in my normal season. Oh, and I added this really cool lizard, yeah. lizard skin grip. You need the lizard skin. The lizard skin really helps me swing. I mean, when I grab it, I get the firm grip that I need on it. Very cool. Okay, so the Mako. Matt, what do you have to say about it? Well, this is a composite bat. Um, so it can crack, which is a downside of buying a Mako over the DeMarini. But also, if you hit it in this area, it will not sting as much rather than the aluminum when you don't hit it in the sweet spot yeah because mm -hmm. like on a bat generally the sweet, the sweet spot is from here to about yeah there, i'd say so yeah. where the mako symbol is yep this bat i have yet to try it obviously because i just got it two days ago i have a big barrel version so i know it pretty well it's a good bat and will hit pretty hard let's talk about the lizard skin a little bit more now so this blue lizard skin just got it, wrapped it, um, really grippy. It helps, you know, with batting gloves, hold it right there. Yeah. It's a great grip when you're hitting. Just because you have batting gloves does not mean that you don't need a good grip. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, lizard skin does, um, the grip does fade over time just like normal grip. Here is the DeMarini Voodoo Overlord. I also have this bat, and the, get a shot of the carbon fiber. Where? Oh yeah, right there. That, that's good. Can't really see it on the camera. It's hard to tell, but it's great to have the carbon fiber. And there's the lizard skin grip. So this bat is legal pretty much anywhere, and it will continue to be legal even next season because it is aluminum on the contrary the mako is composite so it won't be legal now we're going to compare the sound between the demarini voodoo, voodoo overlord and the eastern mako just to show you the difference between aluminum and composite okay here is the mako sound of composite Now we're going to show you the DeMarini Voodoo Overlord sound and how it's different. It's, as you can tell, it's a little bit more dingy rather than just the thud that the Mako gives off. It is very loud. When you hit it, it almost hurts your ears, which is one drawback of having an aluminum bat. Definitely. I agree with that. The aluminum bats tend to sting your hands more yeah. in the colder weather, which is one um drawback now we're gonna list the pros and the cons of each bat starting with the easton mako the pros are you can hit it very far it's a great overall bat it's known mostly as the best bat in little league and you know it's just a great all-around bat the cons of the easton mako are that it cracks and it's going to become illegal next year. Um, since it since it does become illegal next year, it's not really a big deal that it cracks. I mean, it is, but not as big of a deal as if it wouldn't have become illegal next it year. It will only become illegal in Little League, right? Yeah, only in Little League. So if you play Pony, you won't have to worry about that. and um, Maybe other leagues, too. Yeah, other leagues. We're just talking about Little Leagues. For just the Little League. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to give it over to Matt with the DeMarini Voodoo Overlord. Okay, the DeMarini is a great bat. It is two ounces lighter, so you can swing a little faster. 
Yeah, it's a nice feature. For fast pitchers, um, you get nice contact um, from the lightness. But it does not have enough, as much pop, which means you can't hit it as far um, as the Mako. It is much louder. Like, it almost it hurts your ears when you get a solid contact on it. Yeah. And when you hit it, um, when the barrel starts tapering down, it really stings. Your hands. Yeah. Expect, and even if you're wearing batting gloves, it still stings. Yeah, the batting gloves. Yeah. Don't. Even with the fanciest grip and the best batting, best batting gloves. gloves, it will sting. So those are the pros and the cons of the DeMarini Voodoo Overlord and Easton Mako. Now, to conclude the video, here, we're just going to talk about the price. So the price of the Easton Mako, I actually got this one for I think about $110. Since they're going to be illegal next year for Little League, they really went down in price. Um, when the time I got the DeMarini Voodoo, I think... I think also went Yeah. <laughs> Around 110, Matt and I both have a De Marini Voodoo Overlord. Um, so they're about the same price right now. At, at a time, the Mako was higher priced, but that was when it wasn't going to be illegal the next year for Little League. So overall, them being the same price, I mean, you can take your choice. Okay, that's about it for today. Um, that was your Easton Mako versus De Marini Voodoo Overlord bat comparison, bat review. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. And we will be sure to get you more baseball equipment reviews coming on the way. Make sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button.